When I was a child, I hated going on long walks during our family holidays. I always thought they were cold, tedious, and most importantly, it meant time away from my Game Boy. Now in retrospect, those walks are quietly among some of my most cherished childhood memories. In that way, it feels like I have a kindred childhood with Adam Robinson New, the creator of A Short Hike. We both resented long walks as children, but now in adulthood, we understand their appeal. A Short Hike capitalises on that epiphany, providing a unique experience that's frankly a joy to play. There's a beautifully light and unobtrusive setup that wastes no time putting you in control of the adventure. Somewhat begrudgingly, a young girl called Claire is taken on a family vacation with her Aunt May. Like all the best nature holidays, Claire finds that there's no phone signal for miles. But according to her aunt, there may be some at the top of the island's mountain. With promise of phone reception and maybe a bit of adventure, Claire embarks to climb the mountain. Who knows? She may even enjoy herself a little along the way. From your cabin to the summit, you have the freedom to choose your own path up the mountain. You could beeline the whole journey in half an hour, or you could stop and smell the roses for as long as you like. Those who see the journey through to the end, though, will be treated to an emotional payoff that's judged perfectly and wholly satisfying. Despite being a bird, Claire's limited movement abilities initially keeps you pretty grounded. You can jump and glide, but you'll need to walk up paths in order to gain some verticality. Everything changes when you collect your first golden feather. Feathers effectively act as a stamina meter, governing how many times you can flap your wings and how far you can sprint and climb. And when every surface is climbable, the temptation to explore every nook and cranny on the island becomes far too tempting. Collecting feathers not only unlocks more of the island, it also reflects on Claire's growth as a character as she gains experience and self-confidence. Like a chick learning to fly, you'll start off landlocked, but you'll quickly take to the sky and start gliding on the wind in no time at all. After spending just a few moments on the island, you'll feel like a kid in a candy store with a full mental checklist of activities to do. There's seashells to collect, treasure maps to decipher, hats to collect, this one is my favorite, races to compete in, holes to dig up, and chests to plunder. It would seem overwhelming, but the magic of the game is how it invites you to slow down and drink it all in at your pace. While there's oodles to do on the island, you'll want to spend some real time here thanks to the game's warmth and characters. There are dozens of fellow hikers to bump into, and every single one of them has a unique world perspective or quirky task to offer you. Dialogue is succinct and charming, but never saccharine. Where other games would see opportunities to inject some cynicism, the game maintains its playful vibe. At various points in the game, a fellow bird invites you to race around the island. Even if you lose this race, this character will never rub her victory in your face. They just thank you for indulging them. Even the beach stick ball mini game has no losers. As the sports inventor declares, it's a co-op game where everyone's a winner. Does it get any more wholesome than that? You'll even cross paths with some hikers multiple times up the mountain. Each of them remember you and express a genuine interest in how you're getting on. Just little things like this go a long way in keeping you emotionally invested. One that made a real impression on me was a raccoon landscape painter who's trying to perfect their craft. They go through flashes of creativity to bouts of self-doubt, before arriving at a pleasing conclusion. It's rewarding to watch this miniature story unfold, and it's humbling knowing that you're not the only one going on a spiritual journey that day. You don't have to look too closely to spot that a short hike wears its influences on its sleeve. Little details call back to Mario, Zelda, and Animal Crossing in particular, but the references aren't only skin deep, they lend a real texture to the experience, offering an insight into Adam's childhood and the games he holds dear. The visual style too is intentionally nostalgic. The striking rendering technique mimics the look of Game Boy Advance and PlayStation 1 games. By evoking memories of old media, the game harkens back to a simpler time when all seemed right in the world. If you fancy, you can dial down the pixelation, but that would be like removing the salsa from a burrito. It's a key component to the game's distinct flavour. The cherry on top of the game's presentation is Mark Sparling's relaxing score. Music tracks are layered so they shift organically as you move around the island. While a mandolin is the primary instrument for the composition as you walk through a forest, in the highlands you'll hear the same piece of music, albeit with a piano leading the melody. But even without the background music, the soundscape of rushing rivers and gentle winds envelops you in a hiker's paradise.
in this day and age, it's oddly refreshing to play a game without a hint of cynicism. A short hike is just happy to let you explore its world and hang out with its characters. The island starts off as this massive intimidating space, but it quickly becomes your playground. Like Mario Odyssey, it gives you a constant and fulfilling sense of progression that leave you feeling content. Above all else though, it perfectly captures the giddy excitement of going on a youthful scavenger hunt while encouraging you to reconnect with nature and your inner child. Just like Claire, I felt like I'd made some new friends and learnt something about myself on this short hike. Warm and Unassuming is a game I find myself recalling with the same degree of fondness as my memories of bygone summer holidays.